We've seen some interesting stuff in our trips overseas, but the footage the guys from Croydon Racing Developments took while they were in India was too crazy not to show. As you can see, the type and styles of cars is a bit, well, different to ours. And their drag events aren't exactly held at international venues, but it certainly looks like a lot of fun. But one man in India wanted to take things to the next level, so who did he call? Croydon Racing Developments. Some workshops are well known in town, some are well known Australia wide, while others are world renowned. Croydon Racing Developments is one such shop. Hi, I'm Jim Servis from Croydon Racing Developments. Believe it or not, out of the blue we received an email. It was from a fan from overseas, and the guys obviously from India. We saw an opportunity there to do something with somebody else overseas. The car actually did come from India. It took about two months for the car to get here. Another month, we sort of stripped it right down to a bare shell. On and off, the car took about 12 months to build. When the car was completed, it made the cover of Zoom magazine. We were down at the studio to get a closer look. The car was built up from a bare shell and is immaculate inside and out. Exterior wise, there is a GTR front bar, vented bonnet, Lexan windows, custom carbon wing, parachute and the guards were pumped to fit the slicks. Inside, a full roll cage, Nitto bucket seats, harnesses, B&M shifter, custom carbon dash and Motec digital dash are all business. Carpet, electric windows and a back seat were put in as the car was destined to be driven on the street in India. Things like, you know, electric windows and indicators and horn and stuff like that, you don't normally have carpets you don't normally have in the car. So minor tweaks here and there just to make it more streetable. What they really wanted to is they wanted to break the record in India. The drag racing is new, it's young. Basically what they wanted a nine second street car, that's what we gave them. Under the hood is what this car is all about, and no expense has been spared. They asked us for a, like a nine second car, we made sure we built a seven second car so we'd run nines on the street. And that um, particular car is a seven second car. From what we've already proven at other dyno comps and stuff like that, that motor can make over 1300 horsepower, no problems. The block of this RB26 has had a lot of custom work and strengthening before being fitted with all Jun internals, bringing capacity out to 2.7 litres. The head is heavily ported and fitted with Nitto oversized valves and shims and custom Jun camshafts that are very angry. A lot of work went on inside the rocker covers and head to control oil and water flow. The turbo kit is Trust's Mac Daddy, the T88H38GK. It blows through a Trust drag intercooler into a Jun plenum through an infinity throttle body. More power is provided by the single fog and NOS kit. The bottle is in the boot along with the fuel cell and Magnaflow 2000 horsepower fuel pump which feeds the Indy Blue injectors inside the Trust fuel rail. The RB is kept cool by a Jun radiator and the extra cooling lines coming out of the head into the header tank help for more even distribution of coolant in the engine. There's also an N1 water pump, trust oil cooler and custom sump. Management is handled by a top shelf Motec M800 controlling a Motec CDI8 and split fire coil packs. For drag racing, an auto was a must. Harnessing the power is a two-speed power glide with two electronic overdrives for the street. There's a trans brake and 6,000 RPM stall converter. Up the back is a Jun GTR cradle holding a full spool diff and weight transfer is handled by custom valve Bilstein coilovers. 
Cusco caster rods, traction rods, camber arms and Hypus removal kit keep the suspension aligned. The car did have one test day in Australia and we were there to check it out. Rob Margin was behind the wheel and Jim was there to get some valuable data. The slicks didn't fit under the original guard so the car had to be driven on ET streets which were no match for the 1000 plus horsepower. Times may not have impressed, but with wheel spin down the entire track and on a low power setting, the car managed nearly 150 miles per hour, showing its potential. The guards were modified to fit the slicks and the car was shipped off to India. Originally we got told there's an event, there's an event, you know, we booked tickets and we got all the visas organised to go and run it at this event. Okay, where's the event? You know, like, uh, there's not an event, it's, uh, it's private testing. Oh, okay, well, private testing, you know, where at? Oh, uh, at an airfield. So this airfield was pretty neat, but it was just so full of little rocks everywhere. You couldn't really drive a car to its full potential there. No, the guy loved it. He just wanted to keep going up and down and up and down. He wouldn't stop. Jim returned to India again to get the car ready for a local meet and achieve one goal, to annihilate every other car there. The car had no problem destroying any car that stepped up. Jim set the car up on 26 psi and only using nitrous to get the car fully up onto the stall. And on the street surface, it still managed a string of low 9 second passes. People kept telling me, look, you'll never run better than a 10. And for us to come and to run a low 9, half of them were jeering and half of them were stunned. I think it opens up a whole new ball game now for, for India. With this car, Croydon have showcased just how world-class their work is. I wish I was happy with the car because we achieved what they had wanted us to. There were smiles all around at the end of the day. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled as Croydon has a few cars returning to the limelight real soon.